Greetings, viewers. Just having a little drink and thinking about pens. You know, last year, um, I began the video of my favorite pens of 2018, drinking a cup of coffee. And um, some uh, uh, people commented that they didn't like me slurping the coffee at the beginning of the video. So I do apologize for that. And cheers. Um, this year I'm not drinking coffee. I'm enjoying a different type of beverage. This is um, whiskey produced in upstate New York. And uh, no, uh, no promotional fee was paid for this, but I do enjoy this. This whiskey is called Black Dirt. It's made in upstate New York. And it's a really, 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 really tasty product. Um, uh, this particular bottle was a gift from some colleagues. Um, and it is quite good. So, cheers. So, just like last year, this is going to be a video of my favorite pens of 2019. And I don't mean pens that I necessarily acquired in 2019 or new to the market in 2019, just pens that I felt were my favorite pens over the past year. A lot of this is dependent on the mood I happen to be in when I'm compiling a list, etc. But there are a couple of ground rules. One, these have to be pens that you could just kind of go out and buy and are readily available. So even though if I was doing a list of my favorite pens, one pen that would immediately be at the top of uh, any list would be just like last year, this AA Waterman middle joint eyedropper that's about 100 years old. Fantastic, fantastic pen, but you can't just go out and buy one of these. So again, not going to be on this list. You will not be seeing it, although this is an amazing, amazing pen. Similarly, I'm not doing any limited edition pens. So again, if I was going to do open up the limited edition pens, one pen that would absolutely be included would be this Mont Blanc Duke of Milan limited edition pen. This is just a magnificent pen, but again, limited edition, not something that's just, you could just go out and pick up anytime you want. So again, um, um, uh, not going to be on the list, any sort of limited, limited edition, number limited editions, anything like that. But that being said, we have pens at all sorts of different price points, so there's definitely something for everybody on this list. So let's get going, and once again, cheers. So starting at the uh, low end, oh, again, sorry, before we do the winners, we're going to do the runners up. So these are the, uh, the pens that didn't quite make the list, but my, sort of my next tier of favorite pens. So in the under $10 category, we have uh, a pen BBS model 494. This is um, a pen that's somewhat styled after a Pilot 78G. It's a steel nibbed, piston filled pen, extraordinarily, extraordinarily cheap, writes great. As you'll see, obviously, um, like I said, obviously a steel nib, but, um, but a really great, nice lightweight pen. Um, obviously all plastic, but it is a piston filler and it is, I think about somewhere in the two to four dollar range these days. So it's a very, very inexpensive pen, but it is the runner up in the under $10 category. Next up is the, um, under $20 category. And we have a pen from India. This is one I reviewed a few months ago. This is the Airmail Model 71J. It is a really, really nice pen. It has a great ink window. This really stylish, wide band, very functional clip. It is an eyedropper filled pen with an ebonite uh, feed, a steel nib, writes really, really well. Um, I've just been very, very pleased with this pen. I've been using it quite a bit over the last few months, and I've always been very, very, very pleased with it. It has yet to disappoint me. Um, again, it is my runner-up in the under $20 category. This is the Airmail Model 71J. Just a really, really nice, nice uh, uh, pen and an eyedropper filler. Um, next up, and the under $50 category is a pen that came out fairly recently. This is the Wingsung Model 699. If it looks like a, um, a Pilot Custom 823, you wouldn't be the only one that thinks that. It is very much styled after that pen. It is a vac filler. Again, under $50 vac filler. Um, uh, has a obviously a steel nib, but a really, really nice, nice nib. Um, Well-functioning nib. Um, and um, uh, again, really, really nice pen from Wing Sung. If you like a Pilot Custom A23, but don't really want to spend the money, uh, you know, the well over $200 uh, 
um, to get a gold nib pilot pen you can get this for about one tenth the price and it is just a really 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 nice uh, pen so wingsung 699 writes great too which we'll see shortly um, next up is a fairly new pen this is a hundred dollar pen from Visconti this is the Visconti breeze so obviously you're not going to get a gold nib pen from Visconti for this price but it's a pull to uncap pen with a magnetic clip uh, clasp uh, closure on the cap which is very nice it does have the classic Visconti Ponte Vecchio type clip you know that is spring loaded it is a comes in a bunch of fairly bright colors uh, much uh, like uh, like this one it is, has a small steel nib that writes absolutely terrific it is a cartridge converter uh filled uh pen from visconti but it is a really nice pen for about a hundred bucks from visconti really really nice offering the visconti breeze again um it is my runner-up in the in the uh a hundred dollar and under uh category um in the under 200 dollar category um this is uh, a, a pilot pen that is very far from new this pen's been out for a really long time but i just i just really enjoy this pen every time uh, i use it this is the pilot vanishing point fermo so a lot of you may be familiar with vanishing points that you sort of push to click like a ballpoint pen this is a twist twist to extend the point pilot vanishing point fermo it is a cartridge converter pen it uses the exact same nib units as all the other palette vanishing point pens um this one sometimes can be a little tricky to get in the u.s i actually ordered this so uh, a couple years ago from a japanese uh, retailer and had it sent to me from japan but um again it's a little bit different than the typical palette vanishing points the clip is quite a bit different it's styled just very very differently than a normal palette vanishing point but it is my runner-up in the under 100 dollar uh category i'm sorry in the under 200 dollar category um, in the under $300 category is a pen that, well, it's $300 now. This pen cost pretty much exactly $300, so I'm going to put it in this category. This is a pen I did get within the past year. This is a Ranga Model 5. Um, normally, this pen is much, much cheaper, but the thing that makes this so special is it has the Bach 18 karat number 8 nib. So this is a huge, huge uh, Bach uh, number uh, 8 sized uh, nib um, just a really really uh, uh, huge uh, nib just to by way of um, of comparison we're going to compare it to the uh, number six size nib which is in the wing sung 699 so here's the number six size wing sung nib and here is the much much larger um, Bach number eight size nib so it's a very very uh, big nib writes great as we'll see when we do the um, the writing sample um, this is an ebonite pen it can be either eyedropper or cartridge converter filled um, but it is a great 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 pen that I really like a lot you can post it I don't post it because I don't want to mar the finish like I said it's a uh, and it's a handmade in India ebonite pen German made Bach nib um, that's really where all the price comes from. This pen is well under $100 if you get it with a steel nib. So uh, you're paying $250 or so extra for that nib. But boy, is it a great nib. Great pen. Ranga Model 5 with the uh, Bach 18-karat um, number 8 nib is my choice in the under $300 category. Um, and in the 400 a dollar and over category this was last year's winner this is the visconti homo sapiens bronze age oversized now they've changed this pen a lot just in the past year so two things they changed about it one is this one is the one they made for years which has a 23 carat palladium nib so visconti has now as no longer does the 23 carat palladium nibs they went to change it to an 18 carat gold nib so this 23 carat palladium nib is sort of a little bit of a collector's item now because they don't really do these anymore i mean you can still probably find some in stock but they definitely have transitioned over and secondly they've added sort of a more deluxe model of this pen that adds a couple of features one it has an ink window and two uh it has a different 
filling mechanism. So this one has a what Visconti calls a power filler, filler, but it is a single chamber power filler. It doesn't have sort of the main chamber and the reserve chamber. Um, you fill it and then that's it. So they've added the sort of dual chamber power filler mechanism with an ink window, sort of in a more deluxe version of this pen, which is now available. So this is sort of my basic one from a few years ago with the 23 karat palladium nib, as well uh, as no ink window or anything like that. The, you may or may not uh, be aware of this, but this pen, the material on this pen is a lava. It's a lava composite resin made from lava from Mount Etna in Sicily. So this is a really cool pen. It has the Visconti hook safe cap mechanism. So it's just like this little tiny little push and twist to undo the cap, which is really, really nice. Um, it's got the Visconti uh, Ponte Vecchio uh, bridge uh, again, and it is a, a spring-loaded um, clip. The only negative on this pen that I have really, well, it doesn't have a great ink capacity, but I don't really care that much about that. It's a little hard to get this clip to like hook onto a pocket or the pocket of a shirt. You have to kind of do a pinch and lift mechanism. They did fix that on newer pens. So on this Visconti Breeze, it's hard to see, but there's a little kind of lip on the edge of the cap here, which does not exist on the Homo sapiens. So you could sort of just slide this onto a shirt. So they did fix that. So it's a little bit of a pain in the ass to use the clip mechanism. But other than that, it is a great pen. This was the runner up in my top price category last year. Last year. So that is our runner ups. I bet you'd like to see the winners. Well, we're going to show them to you right now. Okay, uh, without further ado, the winner in the under $10 category, once again, um, very difficult to dethrone this guy. This was last year's winner in this category. This is a Platinum Preppy. $5 uh, pen made in Japan. Uh, it is normally a cartridge converter pen. It is very popular to eyedropper fill it, which is what I've done with this uh, one here. I have a video where I'm going to detail how to properly eyedropper uh, fill this pen. Great, great pen in the under uh, $10 category. Has a whole bunch of different nibs with nib widths. This is the, they don't do it as fine, medium, extra fine, etc. They do the actual width of the nib in millimeters. This is the uh, 0.5 millimeter uh, pen, etc. But great, great pen. Um, easy to eyedropper. You can use any ink you want. You can also do all sorts of cool stuff like put a, a highlighter nib on it, a marker nib on it, um, etc. So there's all sorts of cool options for if you want to trick this pen out, etc. Again, $5 pen from Platinum. Great pen. Um, and it is, once again, my winner in the $10 and under category. Um, the next one is if I had a pen of the year in terms of a new pen for 2019, this might make a run at it. This is the D like brass pocket pen. I have a detailed video specifically on this pen that will be coming um, up, but um, this is just a fantastic pen. I don't really want to dwell on all the things I like about this pen, but it might be the best pen of its type, meaning an inexpensive, durable pocket pen that meet, hit that checks all the boxes for a proper pocket pen um, and this might very well be it there's a great pen check out the video uh, that will be coming up where I go into detail on this pen but it is the winner in the under $20 category I think you could currently the price on these change quite a bit I think I paid over $20 for this but um, I think they're available for about $16 as of, as of right now when I'm making this video it has a steel nib it is a cartridge converter filled uh, pen great pen the d like brass pocket pen is the winner in the 20 dollar and under category great 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 pen all right in the under 50 dollar category this pen didn't even make my list last year and i'm almost a little embarrassed that it didn't because this is just a classic in the under $50 category. Really, really hard to beat this guy. It's almost impossible to dethrone him uh, or her. Um, but this is the Twisby Echo. Just a workhorse, fantastic, fantastic um, uh, pen in, in this price point. It is a piston filler, extremely high quality from Twisby. Comes with great Twisby steel nibs with a great great selection this is a, a a stub they come in all sorts of different widths very easy to dismantle and clean um works just great super reliable 
fantastic pen at this price point. Um, and again, I didn't have it on my list last year, and I just don't know why, but this is really, this is the king of the pens at this price point. Very, very tough uh, to beat this guy. Uh, again, the Twisby Echo. All right, next is a is a brand new pen that came out in 2019. It came out just a few months ago. This is the Noodler's Triple Tail. It only at the moment is available in this transparent demonstrator version. Has a fantastic, fantastic, wet, very flexy, three-tined music nib. Great, great pen. Um, uses a syringe filling mechanism, but can be eyedroppered. Um, and just a terrific, terrific pen. Writes really well. Um, I did have to heat set the nib when I uh, uh, with mine in order to get it to really work properly, but that's a very simple procedure, and there's a great video by Brian Gourlay where he explains how to do that if you're not familiar with how to heat set it. It's a very simple procedure, and again, this pen costs about $55. Great, great pen, and again, brand new pen. It is a new pen for 2019, and it is uh, my winner in the under um, uh, $100 category. I did a detailed review of this pen, and you should check out that video if you want to know more, but boy, I was really, really pleased with this Noodler's Triple Tail. All right, the next pen is the under $200 category. So what we're really talking about here are pens in the $100 to $200 price range. And one thing I've really determined is, and this may be somewhat controversial, but it's, I'm starting to get of the opinion that Pilot basically owns this category. This price point, and this is where the gold nibs start to make their appearance, um, is, is gold nibbed pilot pens in the $100, $200 price point are just phenomenal, and they really are really hard to beat. And I couldn't decide, so I made this one a tie. I know that's a little bit cheating, but it's a tie between two different pilot pens, the Pilot Custom 74 and the Pilot Custom Heritage uh, 912. These are both cartridge converter pens with gold nibs. Um, in particular, the, the, you know, these pens win because they have such interesting nibs. So the Custom 74 has a, th has a, um, has a um, um, music nib, um, which we'll see uh, shortly when we do the writing sample, which just writes amazingly well. Really, really great. Um, and the Pilot Custom Heritage 912 that I have has what they call the FA nib or the Falcon nib, which is a gold flex nib that just might be the best modern gold flex nib in terms of off-the-shelf nibs. Now, clearly you can get custom things done, but if you for an off-the-shelf nib from the factory, the FA nib and the Custom Heritage 912 might be the um, um, uh, one of the best uh, values out there. Also, now they have both these out here. Some people always wonder w when Pilot calls something custom versus custom heritage, what's the difference? The best that uh, I'm aware of is custom heritage has flat have flat tops and rhodium plated trim. Custom have gold plated trim and rounded uh, ends. So the ends are rounded on the nibs in the custom series and they are flat with rhodium plating on the custom heritage series. That's where the terminology comes from. Pilots naming and numbering conventions can be um, confusing. Um, so anyway, this is a tie in my book for the winner in the $100 to $200 category. And I know this might be controversial, but I'm really, I'm really uh, over the years, have developed the opinion that gold nibbed pilot pens in the $100 to $200 price point, Pilot kind of owns that price point, at least as best I can tell. So. Next up is the winner in the um, under $300 category. And believe it or not, it is a steel nibbed pen. And this is a pen that just came out recently, but I am absolutely head over heels in love with this pen. This is the Diplomat Arrow Flame. This is an expensive dip version of the Diplomat Arrow. It's well over $200. And the reason it is, is because it is hand, it's, it's, it's steel. So it's way heavier than a normal Diplomat Arrow. And it has been flamed with a torch to get this fantastic effect. But it's not just in the effect, like all Diplomat Arrows, it writes really, really great. It has a great number six size steel nib that writes really well, which we'll see coming up. It has a nice long section that's really comfortable and has perhaps the most satisfying click of any click to open and close pen 
that I own. Um, again, uh, a very, very expensive for a steel nib pen in my opinion, but there's definite mitigating factors here. And this is my winner in the under $300 category, the Diplomat Arrow Flame. Now, we are at the um, $400 and over category, and my winner is a pen that came out a couple of years ago. This is the Pelican M805 Ocean Swirl. So this is one of these pens that I'm not 100% sure the camera can really pick up how absolutely stunning it is. The blue wave pattern, you really think that you're looking, you're like in a helicopter flying over the ocean with rough seas, and that's what you're looking at. It is just absolutely spectacular pen. Uh, this is an M805, so that means it's got rhodium plated uh, trim, and it has got an 18 carat gorgeous writing and gorgeous looking pelican nib. Um, and we'll see in the writing sample that this pen writes as well as good as it looks. So this is a piston filled pen from Pelican, as all the pens in the Pelican M series are, and this just writes phenomenal. And it is my winner in the $400 and over category this year. So, I know we've looked at a lot of pens here, but as we always said, pens were meant to write. And I bet you want to see all of these pens write. Well, you're going to get your wish, because I'm going to show you right now. Okay, let's get going and do some writing. First up, in the under $10 category is the Pen BBS model 494. And this has a, uh, a fine steel nib. And uh, this ink is Pilot Blue. And um, this really writes just so smooth and so nice. Really punches above its weight in terms of a pen that's so, so, so inexpensive. It's very light. That's one thing. I mean, if you really want a pen with some heft, uh, that might cause a bit of a problem because this um, doesn't really have any. But uh, again, great pen. Pen BBS 494. And that is the runner-up in the under $10 category. So in the under $20 category, the winner is the Airmail seventy one J. And this also has a fine steel nib. And this ink is diamine red dragon and um, I did a pretty detailed review of this pen as well it's a nice wet writing very pleasant to use pen um, and I've been very very happy with it um, I keep going back to it I got it a few months ago and I keep picking it up and wanting to write with it over and over again because I really enjoy it writing so much so and again again airmail model 71j it's an eyedropper fill pen great great uh, pen. Next up in the under $50 category is a fairly new pen. Again, this is the Wingsung 699. No, 699. And um, this um, pen has a also has a fine steel nib. And um, again, really pleasant writer. Again, very much a clone of the Pilot Custom A23. So if that's a pen that you like, but don't want to spend the money, this is a great, great alternative. Vac filling pen writes really, really well. And this ink is J. Herban Caco du Brazil. Wingsung, 699, the runner-up 
in the under $50 category. Next up is a fairly new pen, probably came out in less than a year or so ago. And um, this is from Visconti. So this is a Visconti's entry into the inexpensive pen market. This is the Visconti Breeze. Um, writes really well. It does have a tiny nib. I mean, it is a small, small nib. This is a below a number five size nib. This is a, this is a small nib, but it writes well, really smooth, um, somewhat wet. It's a cartridge converter filled pen. Feels really, really good in the hand. It does have that really cool magnetic closure on the cap, which I, which I really kind of like. Doesn't post magnetically. It posts conventionally, but uh, really, really really nice pen um, and this ink is noodlers Javago. so this looks like a black ink but um, believe it or not it's actually a very 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 dark green um, again check out my review of this pen and i also use this ink and i go through the, that ink in some detail it's kind of a cool ink it's not a black ink as much as it, it looks like a black ink so anyway the visconti breeze is my winner in the hundred dollar and over category, this is pretty much a right on exactly hundred dollar pen. Great, great uh, pen. Next up is not a new pen by any means, but just a really hard to beat pen in the under two hundred dollar category. So this is the Pilot Vanishing Point. Fermo. So this is the twist. To retract so you twist it and it comes out and then it's sort of spring it's got a little bit of a spring assistance when it comes back so it uh, works that way a little tricky to do with one hand if you practice you can do it so that's one thing that the regular clicky vanishing point has over it it's easy to do with one hand but this is a really cool vanishing point different type of clip etc I really like it uh, quite a bit um, and again you can't beat these pilot vanishing point nibs so this is a um, this is a fine um, uh, gold nib. I'm sorry, this is a 14 karat nib. Um, and um, great, great nib from uh, from uh, Pilot. This ink is Noodlers Bay State Blue. And uh, again, great, great pen. Not new by any means. This pen's been out for a really, really long time but um, it is my winner in the under $200 category. So if you remember, Pilot basically swept this under $200 category, both in the winner and the runner-up, and a tie for the win. I'm really convinced Pilot kind of owns this price point for gold nibbed uh, pens, but we'll see if someone else can dethrone them uh, next year. All right, let's flip the page here. Next up is... Um, a pen that is expensive because of the nib. This is a pretty. Uh, this is the under three hundred dollar and under category. This is a three hundred dollar pen. Um, this is the uh, Ranga Model Five, but this has the Bach Number Eight, eighteen carat nib, and that is why it's so expensive. The nib alone is well over two hundred dollars. Um, this ink is um, Birmingham Fred Rogers Cardigan Red so um, I love 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 the way this pen writes great flow um, it's a broad oh, I'm sorry no, and this is in broad but it is very somewhat stub-like. You do get some nice variation on the upstroke versus the, the downstrokes here. I really, really like the way this thing writes. Fantastic, fantastic pen. I've been very pleased with it. Again, I have a full video on this pen, so check that out if you want more information. But great pen, and it is my runner-up in the uh, under $300 category. So it's $300 and under, because this pen is pretty much exactly $300. All right. Next up is the winner in the $400 and over category. And this pen was last year's winner in this category. So this is a Vis got a long name. This is the Visconti 
Homo sapiens. Bronze Age. Oversize. And this has an eight, I'm sorry, a, whoa, 23 carat palladium nib. And this one isn't fine. Um, great, great nib. Nice wet writer. It's a vac filler. Fantastic, fantastic pen. Um, one of my few gripes on it is it doesn't have a massive ink capacity. For a big pen that's a vac filler, you would think it would hold a bit more ink. But again, it's not a problem for me, but it's just not for what a lot of people might be disappointed if you expect vac, uh, the pen to have a huge capacity. It just it doesn't. It's got a good capacity. It's just not a huge one. But great, great pen. It was my overall winner, and it has got a beautiful looking nib, which you pretty much won't be able to buy uh, for too much uh, longer because Visconti is switched this out for a gold nib after using palladium nibs as sort of the precious metal of choice for many, many years. So the runner up in the $400 and over category last year's winner, Visconti Homo sapiens Bronze Age Oversize. Well, that was all the runner ups. Let's check out the winners now. Okay, so starting with the winner in the $10 and under category, just as I said, just like last year, the winner is the Platinum Preppy. This one has the 0 0.5 millimeter steel nib. And uh, like I said, you have car typically it's cartridge converter. The converter for these are cost more than the pen, so it's a very, very common pen to eyedropper. And like I said, check my video out where I give detailed instructions how to eyedropper it. Great, great pen, very hard to dethrone in the $10 and under category. Very popular, very flexible, very reliable pen. This ink is got a long name, Noodlers. Black Swan. in English Roses. Uh, really cool ink from uh, Noodlers. Funny name, great ink. Um, and uh, there you go, that is the winner in the $10 and under category, Platinum Preppy. Next up is a pen, again, I'm just in love with. This is the D-Like Brass Pocket Pen. Might be the best pen of its type that I've ever seen. Fantastic. Check out a video which will be coming up soon where I go into this pen in details. So this is the D-Like Brass Pocket Pen. And this has a steel bent nib. So this nib uh, has a little bit of an upturn to it at the end, so you can get some line variation uh, and effects, etc. But writes really well, really smooth, super, super reliable, which is the main uh, criteria for a um, pocket pen. Cartridge converter pen as well, writes really, really well. Um, I've been carrying this around my pocket for quite a few months already and absolutely love it. Doesn't have a model number as best I could tell. If someone knows like what the model number of this is other than just simply D-like brass pocket pen, I'd love to know, but that's pretty much all I see it referred to as. Um, um, and this ink is uh, Noodler's Aircore Blue Black. And I know, I know, it looks kind of greenish, but that's what Noodles calls it. But uh, in any case, um, great pen. Do you like brass pocket pen? Under 20 bucks it is my winner in the under $20 category for 2019. Next up in the under $50 category will probably be my, one of my least controversial choices of all. It's a Twisby Echo. Um, it, uh, it is a um, um, uh, piston-filled pen. Uh, steel nib, great, great uh, pen from Twisby. Just a real workhorse of a pen. So this is a Twisby Echo. And this this particular nib is a steel 1.1 millimeter stub. And it's a nice wet writing pen that uh, really works well. And the stub effect is quite in evidence. 
um, right uh, right there as well. Writes terrific, um, great, reliable, easy to disassemble and clean pen from Twisby. And this ink is Organic Studio. nitrogen that's the twisby echo um, probably the least controversial choice uh, of this entire lot today but my choice in the $50 and under um, category all right next up is a pen that is very new and was new in 2019 this is the noodlers Triple tail. And this has a steel music nib. And um, yes, I know you do want to see it flex, don't you? So we could do a little bit of that. And there you go. Um, writes super, super well. Definitely get some line variation going on there um, and uh, it is super super wet I really like it quite a bit and um, I've just been very very pleased with this pen um, ever since I got it and you have a couple of filling options you can use the included syringe fill you can just remove that and eye drop of the whole damn thing if you want to and it'll hold like a crazy amount of ink but there you go and this ink is uh, Noodlers Gruen Catgus. So that is the Noodler's Triple Tail. And it is my winner in the under $100 category. This costs about 55 bucks as of this uh, recording. Next up is my sort of cop out, my tie um, that I uh, had between the Pilot the Custom Heritage 912 with the Falcon nib and the Pilot um, uh, um, uh, Custom 74 with the music nib. So we're gonna show you both. First up is the Pilot 912. Um, so this is the Pilot Custom Heritage 912. Oh, 912 um, with a uh, Falcon nib and this is in 14 carat and it does obviously since it's a Falcon nib you can get some nice flexiness out of it um, and it is very springy and soft and nice and just writes great and is an absolute pleasure pleasure to um, write the right with it and this ink is Oroshizuku Ama Iro and there you go that's the pilot custom heritage 9 12 with the falcon nib Next up is the other one that tied with this category. This is the Pilot Custom 74 with the music uh, nib. Custom 74 has sort of the, the clips are actually quite a bit different on this too. I really like these sort of ball shaped clips, which a lot of the Pilot Customs have, not the Custom Heritages have, like the Custom 823, etc. has these ball shaped clips. This is a nice clip, but it's a little boring looking, nothing special. I just really like this, um, these ball shaped clips. Those are really cool. So, anyway, this is the Pilot Custom 74 with the music nib. And this has a also 14 carat music nib. And when we talk about a music nib, just quickly, um, the, what these really originally were meant for, if you think about it, if you wanted to draw a music note without a music nib, you draw the note, you'd have to fill it in, you do the line, you do the little flags. So that's multiple strokes, etc. The whole point of the music nib, in theory, is that you can do the bottom of the note. The little stick, the little flags, etc., 
all-in-one sort of shot. That's at least the theory behind it. But um, I'm not sure too many people actually write music with a fountain pen uh, anymore. If anybody does, please let me know. I'm not a musician or anything like that, so I would have no way of, of uh, knowing. Um, and so this is it. So this, you definitely get some really cool line variation here in a sort of a stub-like effect. Look, look at that. That's pretty, that is pretty nice. Uh, it is really smooth, writes great. Um, just a fantastic, fantastic, um, uh, fantastic, uh, fantastic, uh, nib. And this ink is a Roshizuku. Asa. Gao. Um, or Asa Gao, I'm not really sure how that's pronounced, but again, great, great nib. Again, tied for my winner with the Pilot Custom. Heritage 912. These were my winners in the $100 to $200 category, which as far as I'm concerned, I might as well rename the pilot category at this point because pilot really just has incredible offerings. I had another two or three pilot pens I could have put in that category as well. They were just as nice as these, so it was hard enough just deciding which pilot pens were going to win the, that category because pilot just has incredible offerings in that $100 to $200 um, price point. Um, Next up in the um, $200 to $300 category, this is a pen that actually did come out um, in 2019. It came out very recently. In fact, this is the Diplomat Arrow Flame. And um, like this is just like any other Diplomat Arrow, except it's made out of a big hunk of steel, so it's really heavy, 70 gram pen, and it's got this custom flamed effect which is done by hand with a torch. It's just absolutely fantastic. Um, nice and solid in the hand to write with. If you like a heavy pen, boy, this will really do it for you. And it's got a really nice number six diplomat nib that writes really, really well. Cartridge converter filled uh, pen. This ink is Monteverde. Cherry Danish. But uh, great, great pen. Really new. Um, this pen has been out maybe not even a month uh, as of the time I'm recording this. So this is a really, this is by far the newest pen of the bunch in terms of availability. And is my winner in the $300 and under category. Okay, next up is the winner in the $400 and over category. And it is a great pen. This is the Pelican M805 Ocean Swirl. And boy, does that pen not look great. Really looks great, and the nib is just gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. So this is the um, Pelican uh, M805 Ocean Swirl. Um, Pelican's numbering system is fairly straightforward. M means it's uh, a uh, piston filler. The 800, 700, 600, 500, the, the, the small that number, the small the pen, the bigger that number, the bigger the pen. The 800 is the second to largest one they make. The, the, the 1000 series is the largest one they make. Uh, if it ends in zero, 0, that means it's got gold-plated trim. If it ends in 05, it's got rhodium-plated trim. So this is the M805, so it's got rhodium-plated trim. So Pelican has a, unlike Pilot, Pelican has a very straightforward easy to decode. Um, uh, numbering uh, numbering uh, system and uh, again great great pen um, and this has a 18 carat uh, fine nib and this ink is pelican turquoise great great pen wow we certainly saw a lot of pens um, uh, today. Um, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed making it. We saw some pens all the way up into the near many, many hundreds of dollars price range, all the way down to fantastic pens like this, which cost say maybe between two and four dollars. This pen writes amazingly well, and so does this pen. So there is, I hope, something for everybody. Um, in this video, if you want to maybe use this video as a gift guide for somebody, uh, a fountain pen enthusiast uh, that you're shopping for, please, um, uh, by all means, avail yourself of that. And I really hope 
you enjoyed this uh, video. Um, I know I certainly enjoyed making it. Um, and I uh, will please, if you're not a subscriber to my channel, I encourage you to become one. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please leave a comment. And as always, until we see each other again, have a great day. Bye-bye.